so data services has an inbuilt capacity to avoid these duplicates it has an inbuilt functionality which you can make use so that certainly it will not insert duplicates but then you will have to follow a procedure further it cannot do without you instructing to do it so i am trying to instruct it and it will do as required but then you will have to make sure and this particular option which i am showing is not good for a very high volume load it is good in case of a dimensional data but if you try to use the same thing for for transactional data it will fail because this is good if, if there is a small amount of data maybe 10,000 records or 20,000 records then you are fine but not more than that see here the row count is 7 it shows you the job is completed so my understanding is data should get inserted but if you run this query you will see that it will not insert any data here because the data is already there see there are no duplicates for example just for your understanding to show you that this options work let me go here into the same data flow in the options I am going to make this as use input keys as no and auto correct load as no so I, I just changed them to the default now if I run the same job you will see duplicates getting inserted into this particular table just that you understand I am trying to show you both now if you go and run it you will see duplicate data see here everything is duplicated So this is an inbuilt functionality of data services which you can use by which it can avoid the duplication problem. But as I told you this is for the dimension tables you can use this option. If you are using in case of, of a heavy transaction table then it is going to fail because the performance will be very very poor. So do you understand this guys? And I will show you other two options. Ignore columns with with value. If let us say you have a column with a value zero, which you would have inserted as an initial record, which has no meaning. Generally, when anyone deploy an application, they will insert a dummy value saying zero is the value. They will put some xxx yyy into a table. It is a it is a generic nature that they don't want to keep the empty tables there instead they will insert a dummy record as zero and their actual records will start from one so for that if you wanted to ignore that you can say ignore column value where it is zero always you can do that ignore column values with a null so if you make this yes if there is a null value it, it will ignore it still keep it as a null it will not update it but if you say no, it will update even a null value. And the last important option here is include in transaction, transaction control. So we'll make this yes. You'll see what the magic will happen here. Transaction order is zero here. You see? But how does it make a difference now for me? See here it came as zero. This is required when you have the same data getting loaded into more than one table. By which, what I mean is, if I wanted to put one more template table, if I say the same source is feeding two different tables, so I name it as temp1 underscore dept. I named it as underscore one. So I wanted to also insert the same data into other tables. And in here, I go and change this option and I make it as one. What means first it will load one table, which is this one. Next it will load the same data into this table. So this is sometimes very useful, not, I mean here I am trying to throw you an example, but I will give you a real scenario where you are going to insert data into the same table, but different set of data will be inserted. At that time, you will always be using some kind of options like this. 
but here just to show you the option that it has the transaction control that it will insert data first into here and second into the other table i'm showing you this option but the pur the purpose is different you can insert data into the same table in a sequence so that there won't be a lock on the database table which is a very which is a very tough terminology for you at this point of time to understand so for now just think so you have more than one table as target and you want it to load it in a sequence only if this is successful it will load this one if this is a failure it will not load the second one it just ends there so this is all the uh -huh, go ahead you can have it in different database there is no limitation you can pull it in from different data store and you can put it there There, there is no limitation that it should be in the same database it can be in a different schema it can be in a different database yes this helps sometimes if you want it to load an interface if there are two applications where the data has to go into both the applications that is where you use the transaction control and if the first application is successful it will go into the second application at else it will fail here itself and the last option i wanted to show is load triggers this load trigger is a very nice option why i say is you can put you can write a sql statement here the load trigger if, if because this is mysql you don't have more options here it is showing you only insert but you, uh, if it is oracle you have select you have delete you have insert every option can be performed in this load trigger what it means is finally after the execution it can if you know a database trigger you know what it is when a data is inserted into a table if you want to notify other application saying the data got inserted you can put an insert statement so that it will insert a record saying this particular table is loaded particular file is loaded so you can make use of this option just in case you need some other operation to be triggered based on this completion that is the last option you have in here but this these are all database dependent if you ask me is it going to be the same in in oracle no it will be different for oracle different for teradata different for mysql different for sql server if you pull each database table you will see there can be more options or less options than that and the finally today i want to end the session by saying you can have the same kind of a flat file even as a target all you will have to do is define one more file and pull it here you can load data from a flat file to other flat file using data service you can also load a flat file to xml file using data services you can also load a flat file to database table using data services you can also load it into an sap application that is also permitted so everything is possible so it becomes an etl tool that it can load or it can move data between heterogeneous environments that is the important thing you have to understand now it's your time any questions guys